Why do I do that? Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to my channel and today we're just gonna do a little sit down, a little chit chat, uh, just catch up. A lot of people have been asking for a vlog, chit chat, get ready with me video. So I thought no better than to refilm this video and do it today on Valentine's Day. When I originally filmed this video, I thought that the audio was going to be fine and it wasn't because my downstairs neighbor is having the construction renovation of a lifetime apparently because she's been doing construction construction for the past month and a half. And I thought I had a moment of solace and I didn't. The entire time you can hear the construction noises and then also the audio cuts out and then the lighting is changing, which the lighting may change today, but I'm less concerned. I double checked everything, everything. Audio is gonna sound good. So we're gonna redo this video. I already answered a bunch of your questions in the other video, but we're just gonna redo it. I just got my hair redone. So shout out all my girls at RMCM Salon in Chicago. Really making me feel good about myself. But I thought maybe we could do a little Q&A, a little get ready with me. I also did an unboxing in the other video. And of course that audio doesn't work. So we're just gonna pretend like I'm unboxing again, even though we know that I'm not, but I am because I just wanted to show you because why not? I never get to do like little unboxings because things like hardly ever get sent to me. So I figure why not? We'll start with these clips. These clips were sent from Good Die Young, not when I did the unboxing, but I never get to like shout them out enough. I love Good Die Young so much. I've been growing out my hair to be a lot healthier so I can do vibrant colors again. But for the time being, I don't have vibrant colors in my hair. I used to have red. Everybody loves the red. I used to be platinum blonde, but for now, we don't have that. The first thing I wanted to re-unbox was this little gift set from YSL. So cute, Valentine's Day themed. Comes with a couple of lipsticks. Shade 15, I don't have because it's in my other makeup over there. But pretend like I unbox this. Ooh, thank you so much to YSL. That's the other reason why I wanted to do like a re-unboxing is so I can say thank you to these brands that sent me stuff. And especially when I filmed something and I was so excited unboxing it and having that little unboxing haul moment, it got taken away from me. I even did like little swatches too and it's just ruined, it's ruined. They're wonderful, wonderful lipsticks, but the moment is ruined. So I just wanted to shout them out again. Thank you so much for sending me stuff. I also mentioned that we were gonna do a Q&A, which I did already, but maybe we'll have better answers the second time around. I asked everyone on my Instagram story to send in some questions. So we're gonna do that while I do my makeup for Valentine's Day. I thought it'd be a fun little way to have some interaction while I do a little get ready with me because I feel like I'm not good at this, but that's the power of editing. You'll never know how good or bad I am because I get to edit this video and you don't get to see everything else. Number one, how did you know what you wanted to do in life in terms of studying or where to live? That's such a hard one to start off with. Okay. Actually, it's not that hard for me. I've always wanted to be a content creator and this is not the brag before everybody else wanted to be a content creator. Everybody and their mother wants to be a TikToker content creator sensation. Um, but I've always wanted to be a YouTuber ever since I was 10 years old. I have a video on my TikTok with a bunch of my old videos like compiled just talking about how just how proud I am of, of what I've built for myself which you'll never hear me say it again. It's recorded but you'll never hear me say it again if you ever ask me. I'm too humble for my own good but I will say I'm pretty proud of myself that for the longest time all I've ever wanted to do was to be a content creator and I've taken all the necessary steps to do so. When I was growing up like I use Windows Media player editor. It was like the Windows XP version of like Final Cut or Premiere. At the time, that's pretty much all you could work with. So I'd throw together a bunch of videos of my friend and I. We had our own YouTube channel. We thought we were iCarly, which newsflash, we weren't. But we had such a great time. Honestly, if I can go back in time, that's like the one moment in time I'd go back to because there was just so much joy and so much creation and just so much silliness. Like it was just so much fun. And then I moved and, and that's just something that kind of had always kept me going. Cause once I moved and then I, I moved again, like that was something that traveled with me and it just kept me passionate. But I, I've always known I wanted to be a content creator. Obviously, unlike a lot of people who put all of their eggs in one basket, I was never like that. I also knew the reality of how lucky you had to get to be a content creator, which thank you to whoever is up there. If there's somebody out there that's looking over me and controlling my sim, thank you so much for choosing this career path. I'm so excited. I'm 
so happy, I'm so grateful. But you know, my other thing that I also wanted to be was a news correspondent on ESPN doing football corresponding. I filmed football throughout high school and college. I kind of always had an idea that that's what I wanted to do just because I love media so much, I think. I think that's the final answer. As far as living, like I'm not living in LA and New York. I'm not doing that. I'm so grateful I grew up next to such a big city because I have Chicago like in my backyard. I'm gonna go in with the, oh, I could do the influencer thing. I'm gonna go in with the drunk elephant bright drops. And no, these are not the bronzing drops. These are the golden drops. Does that answer that question of what I wanted to do in life? I feel like that's such like a, a tell me about yourself question. You know when you get asked like, hey, tell me about yourself. You're like, what about me? Every person is so complex, even the simplest of people. So whenever that question gets brought up, especially for me, I'm like, well, what, what about me do you want to, there's so many facets and different aspects of my life that I could tell you about, but what, what do you want to know? I think I answered that. I use the Benefit Give Me Brow Volumizing Pencil thingy. Next question while I do my eyebrows. Oh my goodness, perfect one for me to do while I'm doing my eyebrows. What are my off, they knew I was gonna talk about off limits. What are my off limit wedding playlist songs? That is a good question. We will not be doing the Cupid Shuffle. Uh-uh, nope. Cha-cha slide, one thing, right? It's a dance that tells you what to do, but the Cupid Shuffle, it's the same thing for, how long is that song? Five minutes? It feels like forever. That is not gonna be on my wedding playlist song. Also, something that goes along with that, there will be no requests. We have a set in stone playlist, obviously not right now, we still have to discuss that, but no, we are not letting anyone pick the music, especially with how important music is to my fiance. Say and I, no. Probably sound like such a bitch. I'm sorry. <laughs> What's another one? Sweet Caroline is like on the border for me because like that it just gets the people going, but it's also one of those songs that you always hear at weddings, right? Like, you know what I'm talking about? You know what's going to be played at our wedding? Creed. <laughs> you know what's definitely gonna be played at our wedding? Paramore. Obviously. You know another song that's not gonna get played just because I have war flashbacks is Get Low. <laughs> Great song, again, really gets the people going. But I went to this wedding when I was seven, eight. Anyways, I was like the token child that always went to weddings. And at the time, Get Low was like the song, right? And especially with all the weddings that my mom would take me to for her friends. That was always the song that I saw too many people who could not get low try to get low. I don't need that. I don't need to be triggered at my own wedding when I'm already going to be stressed enough. So no get low. Sorry, little John. There's just so many songs where I think about who's getting invited. I'm like, you know who I don't want to see doing that dance? Yeah. Now I'm open to some different spot concealer recommendations. I use the Bobbi Brown. I used to have it in a stick, but now I just have this little pot that I use. Do it under my eyes. Spots that need a little extra help. I'd have one right here. It's an acne scar and it really bothers me. So I always cover it up. Then I'm also just gonna do my eyelids just for the veins under my nose. Anywhere basically where I have a little bit of redness that I need help minimizing. But I like how this blends out better than a concealer most of the time. These three kind of all go in hand as I'm blending out. How does my boyfriend fiance handle the pressure of me singing while driving? Where do I go? when I'm filming my videos, and why do I open the sunroof and all the windows whenever I film? He's known me since I was five. Nothing surprises him. He knows who I am. Where am I going when I'm filming these videos? Usually get coffee or just driving around. There really is no set destination during COVID. It was mostly just to like drive. Like I was just going nowhere, no destination, just, just driving. And why do I always open the windows? Um, Cause if I don't, people get mad at me. I did it once, I wanna say three or four years ago. I said, open it up. And ever since then, if I don't open my sunroof, people get upset and comment on it, which I understand. It adds the whole effect into my brand, dare I say. So I get it, but also I'm just singing in my car. I don't need to. <laughs> I'm gonna go in with foundation. I'm more so of a tinted moisturizer girl. I really love the Tower 28 tinted moisturizer, but I recently ran out, so I have to restock. Now for my backups that I don't normally use, not that I don't like them, but because they're more full coverage, I like something breathable. But today is Valentine's Day, so we're gonna go a little bit different. I have the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter, and then I have the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear. 
foundation. Both I think are like medium coverage. I'm gonna first go in, um, this is a brush, I don't know what type, foundation brush. And then I go in with a beauty blender to blend it. <laughs> Oh, I should also add while I'm blending this in, I am 24 and 5'6 on a good day, 5'7 when I'm not slouching. I guess is a fair enough question because like you never see me standing because most of the time I'm in my car. Ooh, advice for someone who just got broken up with come Valentine's Day. Honestly, you dodged a bullet. You get to save some money. <laughs> it sounds horrible to say, but you don't have to waste your time on going on a date with someone who apparently doesn't want to be with you. Sounds harsh, but it's something that I always like to remind myself. Genuinely, why are you wasting your time, your energy, your emotions, everything about you to be with someone who doesn't want to be with you or deserve you? And again, it's easier said than done because I don't know how long you've been dating this person, but you able to grow and have an experience with another human and that's that but I guess my only advice is just take time for yourself like go hang out with your friends go do some shit that they didn't want you to do obviously safely but like if they didn't want you to go out with this certain person go out with that person you know if they didn't like that you had a certain hobby which all of these things are red flags might I say any of those things that would have pissed that person off go do those things that would make that person upset make them upset that they broke up with with you. Sorry, that's toxic advice, but go do the things that they would not want you to go do. Because God damn it, they broke up with you. So that's not any of your problem. Go do what you want to do. Self-care. Gonna go in with the Tarte Sculpt Tape, which I just recently started using. And then I go in with my brush again. I use the same brush and beauty sponge. I'm not a beauty guru, so I'm just getting ready and this is how I do it. Okay, I got some favorites, favorite color, favorite Paramore song. I'm gonna go in with some blush from Tower 28. Oh, no, what I should do is tell you guys about, <gasps> I got the new Rem Beauty, <gasps> don't drop. Oh my God, that would've been so bad. I got the new Rem Beauty blushes. That's also what I unboxed, it's a bunch of Rem Beauty stuff. I need to start talking about it because I love Ariana Grande. I absolutely love this one, but I just don't think it'll go well. I feel like it's just gonna pop out way too much. So I'm gonna go in maybe with this one or this one, but I'm going to use my Tower 28 blush first and then do a powder on top to really set it in. This is the Tower 28 Beach Please Magic Hour. Just put that in while I talk about some favorites. Favorite color is Forest Green. Favorite Paramore song, Playing God. I have a tattoo right here. It says Playing God is my very first tattoo. Also just brand new eyes as an album. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Since the new album has come out and it's now a Grammy award winning album, I have really come to love Crave. Crave makes me cry all the time. I'm gonna go in now with my setting powder, this one. It just depends on the album too. Love, Crave, and Figure Eight, and Liar off of This Is Why, off of their self-titled Crazy Girls, Ankle Biters, Daydreaming. If we're including the deluxe, I absolutely love Escape Route. Escape Route is so good. If you don't know about it, please listen to it. As far as B-sides go, I love Decoy. I love O Star. I wish I could have heard O Star live. Future, I should also add, off of Self-Titled is really great. Off of Riot, I love. For a pessimist, I'm pretty optimistic. I always say it wrong. All We Know Is Falling is like my second favorite album, just so you know. So there's really no skips for me. Never let this go. Here we go again. Classic. But as far as like top, 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 if I had to pick number one, it's never let this go. And I got to hear it live the very first time I saw Paramore in 2015 at their Writing the Future tour. So good. This is Pinking of You and then this is Skinny Dipped. I had someone ask, what's your age and your fiance's age and wedding updates? I said, I'm 24. My fiance is also 24. We are the same age. I am a little bit older than him. As far as wedding updates, there are None. We both have our bridal parties figured out. We both have the guest list pretty much figured out. Hopefully I have some more updates in the future. For right now, there's no updates. And I, I don't think there's going to be any in the near future until wedding costs go down, which I don't think it's going to. So maybe we'll have a really cool backyard wedding. All I know is that I'm marrying my best friend and that's all that matters. I'm gonna go in with this lip oil from Rem Beauty as well. Can we take a moment for the applicator? It is so cool. Oh my God, someone asked, have you stolen something and what was it? I have. <laughs> 
It was once, okay? And I was young. Before you start making your assumptions and writing me off as a terrible person, I'm going in also with the Rem Beauty. Lots of Rem Beauty. This was also something I unboxed in the other video, but I absolutely love it. So you like go in like this, brush all your hairs up. So I used to play soccer as everyone once did because you know, soccer is like the number one sport in the entire world. I played soccer, obviously. Park District, nothing too extreme. I'm also going in with the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen. Nothing serious, but I'm going in with that. But when I was younger, all of my friends on my very prestigious Park District soccer team, they all had these soccer scrunchies and I felt left out. Where's my soccer scrunchie? And I asked them, hey, where'd you get that soccer scrunchie from? And they're like, oh, we got it from Dick's Sporting Goods. And I'm like, oh my God, no way. Let me go get it. And mind you, I think I'm like seven or eight. And so my wonderful single mother told me, I know you don't like soccer. I'm not gonna go buy you this soccer scrunchie. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Obviously in, in nicer mom terms, but as a child, I just heard her crushing my dreams. One fateful day, she must have forgotten about the soccer scrunchie thing because we went to Dick's Sporting Goods. And what do I spy out of the corner of my little eye? The one, the only soccer scrunchie. I saw it and I snatched it, okay? I snatched it, like the little seven-year-old criminal that I was. And that's the only thing I've ever stolen. And my mom, a couple months later, found the scrunchie because I was guilty, okay? And I didn't wear it because I was like, okay, she's gonna know that I stole it. And months went by, and of course, I stashed this thing because she's gonna know that I stole it because obviously she didn't buy it and she's my mother. She would have killed me, okay? None of this gentle parenting. Me, with the guilty conscience that I have as the wonderful angel child that I've always been, I stashed it. She found it months later. She's like, so what is this? And the guilt. Have you? Do you know what the feeling is of like when you've been caught doing something? You know, like when Squidward was choking, like the that? <laughs> That's what it felt like when I was like seven years old because she found the soccer scrunchie and she's like, oh my God, what is this? And obviously like, what is she gonna do now? Needless to say, that's the only thing that I stole ever in my life and I will never steal anything ever again in my life because that was so scarring. I'm gonna put a little bit of this Rem Beauty mist thing. I love how the one directly under this by the same person is what is the biggest lie you have ever told your parents? That I didn't steal the soccer scrunchie. I look my mom dead in the eyes and I'm like, I don't know what that is. You asked for that scrunchie and she found it after you stole it. Like, Before I get into eyelash kingdom over here, what was your life like before social media? I'm gonna go ahead and curl my eyelashes and then go in with the more Rem Beauty. I did this whole unboxing and I was so excited and none of it panned out. So now I get to re-unbox and to be super excited because now I've tried the products too. The Rem Beauty, I believe this is the volumizing mascara. Oh, and I also have an eyelash primer that I'm also going to use. Lash primer, I'm gonna go in with that and then the Rem Beauty. You know, my life really hasn't changed and that's something I'm also pretty proud of. I'm just very protective of, I guess, I don't wanna say normal life because that's not who I am as a per, like I don't, I don't know. I, I have my own thoughts and opinions on like, influencers like there's some were like yeah like they're gonna like the alex earls of the world the monet mcmichaels the emma chamberlains those people like yeah like you guys are celebrities yeah my life really hasn't changed i don't know is that a good thing is that a bad thing i'm very protective of my life staying the same like there's a lot of opportunities that i'm sure i could have taken and done like i think the most far-fetched one that i've done so far is kesha being in my car while i'm driving and singing i also flew out to not LA, I can't remember where exactly it was, to go film a music video for Jason Mraz. That was really cool. I mean, like, as far as my life changing, it's mostly just the opportunities. Like, whenever in my life do you think I'd get the opportunity to be a part of Paramore releasing a song? I was part of their fucking rollout for the news. That's ridiculous. But yeah, that's, that's the only thing that's crazy in my life. But as far as, like, personal, family, nothing's changed. What I am going to do is maybe a little bit of the YSL. This is the shade 15 that was supposed to be in the box. I like that. Don't you think that's pretty? What is the name of that puppet? Who's that wonderful girl? That's how I feel right now. I feel really good. I'm almost forgetting the most important step. My new favorite step in my makeup. I am torn between these two. I just recently got the Rem Beauty white eyeliner, but I also have the ColourPop gel liner. 
I think that this one is more pigmented. Let's use both. I'll start with this one because I feel like it's not as pigmented and if I want more, I can do more. While I do that, I'm going to answer, if you were in a sitcom, what would the title be? Oh, and who would play you? What would the title be? It would probably be like no one's watching and Emma Stone would play me. I've been told that I look like her sometimes. I get a lot of Florence Pugh, Elizabeth Olsen, I get a lot too. I don't see it. That's my final answer. Someone asked me my current number one fave song right now. And my current number one favorite song right this moment is Where Did I Go Wrong by the Crow Boys Band. And one of those like hot mulligan moments where they found a way to put all of my emotions into words and those words into music. And it's so good. Another person asked, do you want kids? Um, if I was so honest with myself, without the real world repercussions of a child, I would want one. One, I would want a boy. Everyone has a preference. I have names picked out for boy or girl. I would love them both, but you know, kids are expensive. The world that they're gonna grow up in is horrid. Babies ruin their carrier's body. You can never be ready to be a parent, you know, emotionally, physically, financially, but just being so self-aware, there is no good reason to have a child. Every reason is selfish. And I just don't, I don't think I could be a parent. You know, if it happens, it happens. I would love a boy. I'd be happy with a girl. But you know, if I was being completely honest with myself, I'm probably not gonna have kids. And that's my final answer. We'll end on a classic one. If you were stranded on an island, what are the three things you would take with you. I'd bring a fishing pole, I'd bring a pot, and I'd bring a hatchet of sort that I could chop down trees and stuff so I can, you know, also kill the fish so I can chop it, but then also I can make shelter and I'd figured out the rest somehow. And that's all I have. Final look. It's nothing too fancy. I'm so sorry if I didn't get to everybody's questions. Some people asked the same question, so if you didn't see me screenshot your exact question, I'm so sorry, but at least I hope I answered a good chunk or maybe you just had a good time. If you like what you saw, make sure you like, subscribe, comment. I post videos every so often. I don't post every single week. I try to. I'll try and do maybe some like advice stuff. That'd be kind of fun. Do a little advice video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!